What's up, DCS crew? It is Carlos, and I am back with a review on a fixed blade. Okay, so while normally the channel does reviews on folding knives, a lot of people don't actually know this, but I own fixed blades as well. In fact, uh, I probably use uh, fixed blades more than my folders as I, you know, I, I cook every day. So uh, whenever I'm in the kitchen, you better believe I'm going to be using a quality fixed blade and not my folding knife like you might see, you know, on some demonstrations on other channels. I, you know, not knocking them, but a fixed blade is where it's at when, you know, you, you, you got to get the job done. So <laughs> uh, you better believe I'm using a, a good fixed blade. Um, so today we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, this guy right here. Um, the knife in question is a Mike Emler design named the Stonefished, uh, and it's produced by We Knife Company. So a uh, special shout out to uh, Michael Emler from Crazy Sharp, uh, We Knife Company, and the Apex Pass Around for giving me some time to check out this knife and offer my thoughts for the channel after using it for quite some time. Uh, I got a lot to talk about on this, guys, so uh, stay tuned, and I'll see you in about uh, 20 seconds or so. start this review with a brief disclaimer and uh, the disclaimer is that you know uh, it's it's pretty obvious uh, for most people that uh, fixed blades aren't something that Asian companies are relatively known for as the market's pretty much dominated uh, from heavy hitters like you know K-Bar, SE, um, Ontario Knife Company, uh, even European companies like, you know, Mora, uh, etc. But um, there have been some really great fixed blades being produced uh, by Chinese manufacturers uh, that have been uh, designed by, uh, you know, designers here in the U.S., and I mean, they've blown the market doors wide open. Uh, two companies that come to mind that have produced some excellent fixed blades from U.S. Uh, producers are, um, excuse me, U.S. designers are uh, Kaiser and We Knife Company. And if you'd like to see some honest, hard use and testing videos, um, be sure to check out my buddy Eric from the Outer Limitless YouTube channel as he's gotten his hands on a few and he's demonstrated that they can really hold their own against some of the best out there. So you do definitely want to check that out. But uh, back to the knife. Now, um, like I mentioned before, uh, the Stonefish is a design that has, um, well, that was produced uh, by Michael Emler. It's his uh, brainchild. Um, he is the man behind Crazy Sharp, where is basically a, a, where he provides professional knife sharpening and repair for companies uh, and private clients. And when I say companies, uh, if you've ever heard of the Ferrum Forge Brothers, um, he is the guy who sharpens all of their knives. And whenever you send in some uh, warranty work or you know sharpening work uh, for them, they send it over to him, and he gets it nice and sharp uh, and sends it back to them who sends it back to you so uh, you know just something to consider so being around being that he's been around blades for I don't know uh, <laughs> for a living uh, it, it's it's only natural for him to introduce his own design which brings us to the knife itself now if you're a fixed blade guy you're gonna see a lot of aesthetic nuances here that really set it apart from uh, the average fixed blade and um, Speaking of which, okay, um, I have a few from my personal collection that I'd like to go ahead and bring up uh, as a, just as a size comparison. Let me see if I can put this guy right up here. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and check out some of the other ones. Now, here's one that I keep in my, my bug out bag. Um, it's uh, the Ontario Knife Company Rat Number 3. I'm gonna go ahead and set it by the handles here. It's got a nice little lanyard there. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right, so that's the Ontario Rat number three uh, next to the Wee Knife Stonefish. This is the, um, here, I'll go with this one. This is my workhorse. This is my uh, uh, Ethan Becker and K-Bar uh, collaboration, the Becker BK7. <laughs> um, this is some one of the older ones that has the, uh, the logo stamped 
uh, into the blade itself. This one's been modified as you can see. Usually this comes with a black coating and I had that removed and sandblasted. Um, and some jimping was added here to the spine. Um, this was flattened out to be able to go ahead and use a ferro rod. And um, the handles themselves have been shaved down to have a little bit more of an ergonomic uh, uh, feel to them. Anytime I need to use a knife for some really heavy tasks, this is the guy that 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 <laughs> answers the call. So that is my uh, Becker uh, BK7. Okay, uh, here's one you don't see very often, and for good reason, it is no longer in circulation. Uh, this is the Gerber Strong Arm. Now they do still sell the Gerber Strong Arm, but not in this configuration. This is uh, these are gray handles with BDZ1 steel. Uh, typically, you'll see this with either a black or um, actually, yeah, no, no, no. You, you see with a black blade and 420 high carbon steel. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's either that or 1095. I'm pretty sure it's 420 high carbon steel and you'll see it in a serrated or a plain edge. And this is the plain edge version with BDZ one steel. And, uh, last but not least, I, I do have a couple others, but, uh, just to kind of get the, uh, the review going a little bit more. This is my buck knives, uh, buck 113 Skinner. Um, I have this guy because he is a workhorse. Don't let the size fool you. Um, beautiful wood handles and brass bolsters. Um, nice little leather lanyard that I added there. Uh, 420 high carbon steel. This guy is a maniac and will. <laughs> the size is, is very uh, deceptive in that he will go through, I mean, whenever I have a, uh, a rack of ribs or anything like that, this is what I use to, to carve through them. I mean, fantastic knife. 420 high carbon steel, boss heat treated by Buck, lifetime warranty. You cannot go wrong with that. So take these out of the way and go back to the subject at hand, which is the We Knives uh, Stonefish. Now, with the size comparisons out of the way, uh, I'm going to go into the pros and cons of the Stonefish. And um, this setup, in, in all honesty, um, is not just with the knife, but with the sheath and the uh, the lock, the locking mechanism uh, itself. And I'll get into that in a second, it's a tech lock, but uh, we'll start with the knife here. And uh, okay, so the hardware itself, okay, that you're gonna see here, it's titanium, okay? Usually you don't see that in these kind of knives. And I think it's really nice. Um, speaking of which, the um, scales themselves, are uh, very nice, smooth, but but tactile uh, G10. And you have your choice when you uh, purchase this particular knife, you can get it in green and uh, black or in tan G10. In this particular case, I was sent over the tan G10 version and I really like this one. If, if I did have a choice, I would have chosen this one anyways because um, the light G10 scale, um, it allows you to dye it a slew of other colors as well. So if you don't like uh, green and if you don't like black, pick up the tan version, you'd be able to go ahead and darken it with, you know, a color of your choice. So that, that is something to consider. Now, um, one really interesting um, fact about this particular knife and the handles themselves was um, when Mike received the uh, prototype from Wee Knife Company, they had carbon fiber scales. Now, um, you know, he served in the military and um, uh, he's, he's the kind of guy who, you know, uh, gets a knife and he uses the knife for a purpose. It's not something that's gonna be a safe queen. Um, he got the carbon fiber scales and he felt that they were just too slick and they were they were a little gaudy to be completely honest. You know, for something that's gonna be putting in work, he didn't want it to look that pretty. So he's like, no, it's gotta have G10. And uh, lo and behold, We Knife Company went ahead and listened to him and produced uh, three versions in G10. So you can get this in green, black, and a tan. So this version of uh, the knife, which by the way is the, the Stonefish is model 919. This is the 919B with the uh, smooth light tan G10 scales. Okay. Speaking of the scales, one last time, the, uh, the, the handles, uh, I'm sorry, the hardware is titanium. It can be anodized, but it can also be removed using Torx bits. Okay, so if, as long as you have a good, uh, you know, a Torx bit setup, you can go ahead and remove these and uh, service the knife. You can, you know, dye the scales, clean them, do whatever you need to do. And uh, yeah, put it right back 
and continue using them. So that's something that I really like. Most knives, um, you know, they, most knife companies allow you to do that, but say for example, like on the Buck Skinner, as you can see, these are pinned in. You're not gonna be able to go ahead and remove those. Um, uh, you know, the same with the Gerber strong arm, as you can see, you cannot remove these handles. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, if there is corrosion be uh, underneath the scales, you're never going to really realize that. So I like the fact that you can go ahead and take this down and you can service the knife itself. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now speaking of which this is a full tang knife. And as you can see, um, what we mean by full tang is, um, that the knife extends all the way down from the top to the hilt and or, or the, the butt or pommel, whatever you choose to call it. Um, it is a full tang knife and the tang itself is redacted. So, uh, I don't know if you could see, but if you look from the sides, you can see the, uh, the metal right here, which is 20, uh, 20 CV steel. Um, they actually did that for, um, for, for really more for aesthetic purposes. Mike actually mentioned it in, in a video that he did about the knife and, um, it's, it's nice. It, it sticks out quite a bit. Uh, it sticks out not too much, but just enough to where it gives a nice, uh, look to the, to the knife without being, uh, overbearing on your hands themselves. So it's not something that you really feel, but it is something that looks really nice, uh, and something to consider. So, uh, and definitely not an issue when you are gripping it. So to the blade steel, um, in very, very small letters, you will see, let me see if I can find it here, right here. Let's see if maybe I can get, hoping I get it there. It's a CPM 20 CV. That's crucible powder metallurgy. 20 CV steel. Not typically something you see in fixed blades because usually they're thumbers. They got, you know, 420 high carbon steel, 1095, tool steel, D2, you know, that sort of thing. This is about as premium of a steel that you will find on a knife. You'll get stuff like M390 on the Bradford Guardians. Um, but this is basically the Crucible's uh, equivalent of the Bowler M390. So um, it's, it's, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. It allows the blade to, you know, to really take a beating and maintain the edge, you know, as well as resist corrosion between cleanings, when most of the fixed blades would, you know, rust or corrode. Um, and uh, you know, uh, unlike most uh, similar sized fixed blades, this blade, um, you know, once I started using it, I noticed that the stock uh, in itself is actually pretty thin. It's thinner of a blade stock that you would. Uh, typically see in most fixed blades, which, you know, combined with um, the flat grind that it has, it makes a very good utility knife because it's extremely slicey. Puts in a nice clean cut. And um, it, I mean, you know, if it's something that's very detail oriented, you are not gonna have a problem with it. And you're gonna find that it really puts in work no matter what you do, okay? So, um, just as a uh, bit of a comparison, let me go ahead and see if I can find, let me see here. Okay, here is the Gerber strong arm and here is the stonefish. As you can see, it's quite a bit thinner uh, that you can see. I wanted to go ahead and show one of the other ones, but typically they're coated black, so you can't really see. Oh, and here is the the, uh, the Gerber, um, excuse me, the, uh, the Becker BK7. So you can see the two. Okay, so yeah, quite a bit thinner than those, um, but still meant to do some serious, uh, serious work. Now, um, onto the usage of the blade. You'll see on some sites like Blade HQ that are gonna tell you that this is an everyday carry blade. This is not an everyday carry blade. Something maybe this size, something maybe this size, that's something that you could, you know, go ahead and scout carry. You can, you know, uh, horizontal carry, whatever you choose to, to, to call it. Um, but the truth is, this is just too big to be able to do, you know, everyday carry. You know, it's it's the equivalent of somebody, you know, I don't know, uh, EDCing a Glock 34 uh, and saying that it's easy to conceal. Yeah, you can probably conceal, but it's not going to be easy. Not everybody can do it. I have a rough time, you know, maybe with the right holster. Uh, you know, EDCing a Glock 19, partly because of the fact that it's a bit bulky. 
it's not that this is bulky, it's just this is, the dimensions are not suited for everyday carry. Um, you would see something like this a little bit more for, oh man, I don't know. Uh, it, like I said, it's a great utility knife, so you could see it, you know, working in the kitchen, uh, if you're outdoors, you know, or even as a self-defense blade if you really need it to. So, um, on to the, uh, the blade, uh, the, excuse me, the handle on the blade, okay? As, as you can see, my hand gravitates towards the way that the, the thumb, um, I guess the, the, um, the shape of the handle is designed and um, the handle length allows you to get all the fingers securely onto the G10, no matter whether you have a forward or like a stabbing type of uh, grip. And if you notice, there is uh, jimping here in the front and here in the back. So no matter how you use it, you're gonna have a nice index point to be able to go ahead and have that secure grip and get the most out of this knife, okay? That's something I really liked about this knife. And, um, you know, it, it's something that really helped when I was using it. It, it didn't feel like, I, you know, I had any hot spots, anything like that with continued use. Even though I'm really more of um, a, a micarta guy in the, scale, the handle scales, I think that the combination of, you know, the jimping in the right places and the G10 scales really helped a lot. So uh, it's something to consider. Now, um, one thing that a lot of people are going to overlook when they look at this knife and they look at the pricing online and they check out reviews, um, a lot of people don't get this, but a knife is a great, you know, can be a great thing, but typically the first thing that you switch when you buy a knife is the sheath. And this is the sheath that actually comes with it, okay? now. Uh, I want you to take a good look at this sheath, okay? People that, you know, really do EDC uh, a fixed blade and uh, know about sheaths can see a lot of little things that really stick out about this sheath. For example, okay, I'll just start from, from the top. The locking mechanism, okay. So this is what is used to secure your, uh, the, you know, the knife onto your person, kind of like when you have a, uh, uh, you know, a gun holster like this one for the Glock 43X that has a single clip. Okay. Now, what you do is you basically lift this up. You insert that, uh, you know, onto your person inside the waistband, and then you you clip this under the belt, and you're good to go because this has this a uh, bit of retention here. Okay. In this particular case. This design is what's called a, uh, it's, it's a, a tech lock design. And it's something that I happen to use on one of my other knives. Um, just as an example, I have a tech lock on this particular knife, which is my uh, Buck 113. This um, holster, by the way, was from uh, Mark at Extreme Edge Custom Kydex. Great, great holster. Um, basically what you would do is you would remove the mechanism up here. You would, you would open this here and it would release it, there we go. And then you place it right on your uh, your belt, clip it in place, latch this on, and you have a really, really sturdy holster, okay? And um, aside from that, one thing that it does is it has a variety of little, um, you can call it little holes here, uh, little dots, uh, for you to be able to go ahead and adjust it different ways depending on how you choose to carry, um, whether it's vertical, horizontal, scout carry, um, if you wanna mount it on your, you know, your bug out bag or maybe some hardware that you're using while you're carrying some molly. Um, it, this is something that's, you know, very, very uh, compatible, whether you're using straps or whatnot. So um, I, I like the fact that the, um, that uh, the tech lock style holster is being used on this, but this is actually a one up from uh, the, the tech lock holster that I have on uh, my buck blade. And why? Well, this is one of these quick release ones where you actually uh, use the mechanism up here that has jumping on it and it releases the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the lock itself. Um, it says it's a dots uh, patent. So, you basically click it back into place once it is inside of the, the waistband or the belt and you are back in business. So you wanna go ahead and remove it, boom, put 
put it back on, boom. That's something I thought was really good. So the, uh, the quality of the Kydex is actually really good. Um, you can feel a nice snap when you go ahead and you put the knife in. There you go. And um, the rivets are actually, you know, pretty sturdy. They're pretty stable. The Kydex is nice and molded throughout. You don't see any cracks through here. Um, I, I'm, I'm not the first one to look at this knife. So uh, it's nice to see that it's held up throughout this. And then most importantly, something a lot of people uh, may or have realized already. You see this little dot over here? That's not a dot. That's actually a, a, a small hole that's been drilled into the uh, the holster itself, excuse me, the sheath itself. I'm thinking holsters because of guns. Um, the sheath itself. And what you can see inside of that is, is the actual metal from the knife. Now, there is a reason why that's there. Say, for example, you're using this in harsh conditions. Say you happen to be in a river. Uh, say it happens to be rain and some uh, moisture gets into the knife itself. Well, what happens is typically, if you have your standard holster, the water's gonna collect in here and it's gonna, if you're in salt water, it's gonna accelerate corrosion and rust inside of the actual uh, knife itself. With this kind of holster, this hole was created to be able to go ahead and allow that water to pass through and allow the knife to breathe so that it corrodes less quickly. <coughs> Now, the, I, I think it's pretty genius that they went ahead and they issued this. You, you don't see this often from a, a, a large production company, but the amount of detail that went into this is really, really worth uh, noting. And I mean, aside from the fact that it's a nice, uh, you know, premium stainless steel blade that you're gonna get with good quality steel and 20 CV, um, you wanna make sure that that investment is is kept uh, in, in high regard. I mean, they understand that you're paying quite a bit for this kind of a knife and this setup. And these little nuances and stuff that you see uh, just further, you know, cements the fact that this is a very well thought out design from knife to sheath to you know locking mechanism i, I gotta i gotta hand it to, to we knife company i really really like this setup so um i really wanted to talk about that so i you know even if you don't use the tech lock uh you can throw some paracord onto it and you can run it on your gear too you know something to consider now um on to the cons okay I guess you can say that there there are three main cons that I have here, and and you know I'm I'm really being pedantic when I say this. You know, there's just small. Some of things are just small. So uh, I'll go with number one. Now, number one, uh, people that are not familiar with Weed Knife Company's exceptional quality control, okay, are going to be apprehensive about buying the knife, and even more so when they see the price tag. Typically, you're going to see this on you know uh, big box uh, websites like uh, Blade HQ, Knife Center, that sort of thing for about $250. And yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a sticker shock, but if you look at similar knives from companies pushing materials similar to the Stonefish, okay? I'm talking quality blade steel. I'm talking quality handles. A badass sheath right out of the box that you don't have to throw away and get an awesome custom knife, uh, you know, sheath maker uh, to, to redo for you, which is, hey, which is perfectly fine. You can get another one, I mean, by all means. But, you know, considering this that you get literally makes this knife turnkey high quality out of the package, I can guarantee you that the price of competitors will be at least what you see here or way more than what this knife is, okay? Uh, what this knife is worth. Hell, there are fixed blade purists that are paying more than this for a blade with inferior steel and without a sheath from well-known knife makers, okay? Uh, you know, nothing against those knife makers, but you know, you're basically getting high quality stainless steel, you know, uh, G10 handles that are removable with Torx bits and, and it's titanium, you know, uh, uh, torque screws that you know you can you can choose to customize or leave as is nice quality uh sheath and the tech lock which is freaking awesome by the way um i mean for 250 bucks that's a steal I'm, I'm gonna be honest I, well i wouldn't call it a steal but it's a really good deal uh considering you know you get a lot of other things from other companies that you know and when you buy it you're like okay i'm gonna throw away the sheath i'm gonna get a new one and i'm just gonna move forward from it you know you end up customizing it and at the end you're paying almost what you're paying here so something to consider, okay? Um, 
you know, when you see something like this, you're, you're going to be a bit apprehensive of the fact that it's Wii Knife Company and that it's a $250 knife. Now, um, brings me to my second uh, uh, thing, and I, and I actually touched up on this before. Uh, the size makes it difficult to EDC. In fact, while companies, like I mentioned, uh, will have it listed as an everyday carry knife, this is not an everyday carry knife. And I mean, Mike will be the first one to tell you that, uh, you know, this knife is meant to be a utility knife that somebody maybe dropped into the, the wilderness or something like this, uh, you know, can rely on it to survive. All right. Now, um, the only other thing that I found, I guess you could say as a con is that, um, uh, you know, these other knives that I have up here, uh, let me see here. There's the Rat 3. There's the the Buck 113, uh, the, the Buck Skinner. And I don't have it on this one, but, you know, it does have it. You notice any similarities here in the back? Well, they have lanyard holes, okay? They have lanyard holes on the butt of the knife. Now, it's nothing crazy. I'm not really a big lanyard guy, but for smaller knives, I think that they work really well. And... Um, while this isn't a very small knife, uh, it would have been nice to have something like that so somebody could add a little something else and, you know, just customize it, make it theirs. Uh, you know, and I'm just putting it out there. That's that's more my personal opinion. Um, you know, Mike is a no-nonsense kind of guy, so I can understand why there wasn't anything on here. But, you know, just coming from my personal experience and somebody wanting to, you know, maybe customize this a bit more, I would see that and I would be like, okay, that'd be, that'd be something I'd like to go ahead and see if they do come out with a newer version or if maybe he chooses to come out with a different uh, design with We Knife Company that they may want to incorporate. So, that being said, those are my cons. There's really only three cons. There's a lot of pros and only three cons on this fixed blade knife. Now, what are my final thoughts? Personally, I believe that Mike uh, designed this based on what his experiences were when he served in the military, which is why when compared to other knives on the table, especially, you know, knives like the Gerber Strongarm, uh, you see a lot more application for multiple situations. You can skin game, you can use it as a camp knife, you can whittle with it. It's meant to wear more than one hat per se. And for the price, it is quite possibly one of the few fixed blades that I've come across that has a complete turnkey package, as I said before. I mean, it's a good knife, you get quality scales, you get a durable Kydex sheath, you get a multi-position tech lock, you know, whip screws for attachment. And yes, it's going right now for $250 on all of the major knife sites. I say buy once, cry, cry once in this particular situation. And I'm gonna say it again. You buy once, cry once. Trust me on this, it's worth checking out. And honestly, if I had more time, uh, I'd ask Mike if I can send this out, uh, you know, to Eric at the Outer Limit List channel to really put some work in uh, on it and prove that this is a well-rounded fixed blade, both in form and function. Again, I just want to give a big shout out to the Apex Pass Around and uh, Mike Emler from Crazy Sharp for allowing me to check this out. And if you have any questions you'd like to ask him about the knife or you need some badass knife sharpening services, you can contact him using the information listed on screen. Okay, he'd be more than happy to help you out with that. So thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you EDC, whether it's a folder or a fixed blade, just remember, Thank you, DCS. You, you guys take care, and I will see you next episode. This is the Wii Stonefish. This is uh, model 919B in their collection. And I'm out.